Right now on Newsday TV, the historic federal indictment of former President Donald Trump. It's over his handling of classified documents. Our experts weigh in on what's next legally and politically for Trump and what it could mean for the 2024 race for the White House. It is Friday, June 9th. Good morning. I'm Jasmine Anderson, a federal grand jury indicting former President Trump in connection with his handling of classified documents. That's according to two people familiar with the situation who were not authorized to discuss it publicly. The indictment includes seven criminal counts linked to the raid on his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida last year. He's now the first former president to face federal charges and the second time a former president has been indicted, period. The first time was also Trump in Manhattan over his alleged hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. President Trump calling the indictment a hoax. I'm an innocent man, I'm an innocent person. Uh, they had the Mueller hoax, the Mueller report, and that came out, no collusion after two and a half years. That was set up by Hillary Clinton and Democrats. But this is what they do, this is what they do so well. Trump says he will turn himself in Tuesday in Miami. Trump supporters are blasting the indictment on social media, saying it's a conspiracy to get Trump the potential Republican nominee out of the 2024 race for president. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy calling it a, quote, dark day for the United States. He went on to say Joe Biden kept classified documents for decades and saying he stands with President Trump. McCarthy says House Republicans will hold this brazen weaponization of power accountable and, quote, no reaction yet from President Biden. Joining me now is Newsday columnist Joy Brown. Let's talk about the gravity of this situation. Trump is now the first former commander in chief to come under federal indictment. Well, everybody keeps throwing the word history around and yeah, it is historic, but a better descriptor could be unprecedented. As a nation, we have never ever seen anything like this. But the other part about this is that as a nation, we have never ever had to deal with anything like this before. Again, not just a former president, but a current presidential candidate. 2024 is going to be a an extraordinary year, but not just for Donald Trump. It's going to be an extraordinary year for the United States and every citizen as well. Yeah, you talk about 2024. What's the likely impact of this second indictment on Trump's run for re-election? Well, think about it this way. One, the base is going to stand with him. You're beginning to hear some of that right now. But the, the challenge for him is that he's going to have to not just keep that base, but build on that base as he tries to run for president. He needs more than the base to make it over. And he's got to deal with this. Remember, January, there are caucuses. February, he's got to deal with primaries. He's got to make it all the way to the convention. Meanwhile, back at the ranch in March, he's already facing a trial in New York State on charges, and it is likely that he will also be facing a trial on these new indictment. And in addition to that, there are still outstanding uh, legal matters that could end up with him facing other legal incidents. Yeah, so he'll be spending a lot of time in the courtroom instead of the campaign trail. So, Joy, these charges bring about the possibility of prison time, right? Well, they're federal felony charges. And of course, they do bring about the possibility of prison time uh, if he's convicted. And the key word there is convicted. The former president, like any other defendant, is entitled to the presumption of innocence. Um, he's been indicted by a grand jury in Florida, which would, might seem to indicate maybe that his, his lawyers will be able to find a jury that will be able to listen to, 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 to what's going on here. But the prosecutors have to convince 12 Floridians of the former president's guilt. It is not going to be an easy thing to do. Uh, and for us on the sidelines and in the middle at the same time, because we're talking about a, a presidential election, you know, we're going to be looking at him in the courtroom and we're going to be looking at him on the campaign trail. We've never, ever, ever had to deal with anything like this before. Like you said, unprecedented joy. Thanks for joining us and breaking down the gravity and potential impacts of these, uh, the latest criminal charges against the former president. Thank you. Stay with Newsday for the latest on Trump indictment. We'll have breaking developments on Newsday.com, here on Newsday TV, and on our mobile app. Turning now to the continuing air quality alert, the smoke and haze are getting better, but still not the best, especially for those with respiratory problems. Today is day three of the unhealthy air on the island. 
Thanks to raging wildfires in Canada, the air quality alert is in effect until midnight tonight. It's another day of empty playgrounds at schools across the island. Districts again canceling outdoor events and moving recess inside. Racing is expected to resume at Belmont Park today. Training workouts and races were halted yesterday due to the poor air quality. Governor Hochul says if conditions don't improve, tomorrow's Belmont Stakes, the last leg of racing's Triple Crown, could be canceled. The air is expected to get better by tomorrow. Stay with Newsday for the latest on the dangerous air quality conditions. We'll have the breaking developments on Newsday.com, here on Newsday TV, and on our mobile app. Happening today, we could learn the names of the people who paid to keep indicted Long Island Congressman George Santos out of jail. A federal judge approved the request from several news outlets to identify who posted his bond. The judge delayed the release of the names until today, giving Santos's lawyer time to appeal. Santos was released on a half a million dollar bond last month after pleading not guilty to several charges, including stealing from his campaign and lying to Congress. The search continues right now for the suspect in road rage BB gun shooting in Suffolk. Police say a driver was hit with shots from a BB gun or gel pellets by another driver yesterday morning in Deer Park. It happened as the driver approached Comac Road on Marcus Boulevard. We're told the suspect was in a black Hyundai. Police say the victim did not need medical attention. Coming up from idol to rival, a story you'll see only in Newsday. It's an exhibition until the first punch is thrown and uh, someone gets a good crack to the jaw. So we trained hard. I'm bringing bad intentions to Floyd for as long as that fight lasts. Long Island native John Gotti III getting ready to get in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. Look at these strawberries. We're checking out what you can find at our farmer's market. Sweet, but first, your hyper-local weather. Here's a look at Tiana Beach and Hampton Bays. You can see the air quality conditions are improving. That's what we want to see, right? Partly cloudy today. Highs only around 68 degrees. Tonight, we're in the 50s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, around 75 degrees. Should be a perfect weather day. And here's a look at your future cast. Showers start this afternoon and should clear out by tomorrow. A look at your seven-day forecast coming up. Watch Newsday TV on the big screen. Use the remote to activate Siri, Alexa, Roku, or the Google Assistant on your streaming device. Say, install Newsday. Newsday TV, covering Long Island like no one else can. News is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. Fresh fish, fruits, vegetables, and more. Lisa DiStefano and Erica Marcus explore local farmers markets in today's Feed Me TV. We are checking out our local farmers markets. I am no expert, but luckily our food writer, Erica Marcus is, because there's a lot of ground to cover. Where do we begin? We begin with strawberries because it's the beginning of June and local strawberries have just begun to be harvested. Is there a method to farmers marketing? Uh, bring a bag, bring a big bag, and um, go with no preconceived notions. Whatever is here is what's ever in season and that's what you buy. This is like the best way to learn what's grown on Long Island. Elisa, look at this lettuce. It's like a centerpiece. It's like a bridal <laughs> bouquet. There's a lot here. Yeah, there are about 20 vendors at this market. How do you decide where to go? You can get ravioli here, you can get kombucha, but to me, it's about the farms and the seafood because that's something you can't get anywhere else. Catch of the Hamptons. Now this is a Hampton Bay's based fisherman. What you get here is, with the exception of salmon, only local fish that was caught on Long Island. From the North Shore to the South Shore, this is the Long Beach Farmer's Market. Erica has her bag. Where are we going first? Let's hit the produce. All right. Purple. Ooh, purple asparagus. asparagus. Look, Look at, that. at that. Here we've got another signifier of spring, Ooh. rhubarb. Ooh. 
Long Beach Farmer's Market has so much, but they're particularly strong on baked goods. Pat's cookies he makes with browned butter mm. so that they have a caramel depth. Johnny Bread's got its start at the Glen Cove Farmer's Market, and this year they've come to Long Beach. This is their flagship sourdough, and uh, I think they have some samples of the flagship for us. That's good bread. For Newsday TV, Elisa DiStefano. For more on farmers markets, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Get more of the stories you've seen on Newsday TV at Newsday.com. Plus breaking news, investigations, things to do, restaurants, and other Long Island news you can't get anywhere else. At Newsday.com, covering Long Island like no one else can. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.